Well, when I first got married, my wife was Church of Christ, so we went there a while, and I learned to sing our cappella. So we'll give it a shot. <laughs> Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters. Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you've delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to to a blind man. Mary, did you know your baby boy would calm a storm with his hand? Amen. Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? And when you've kissed your little baby, you've kissed the face of God. The blind will see, the dead will hear, and the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations. Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect land? This child that you are holding is the great
and uh, one or two verses from Revelation chapter 2. So, the last book, it's called the Revelation. It's not Revelations. It's a singular revelation. So, a lot of people just call it the Revelations, but it is one revelation. All right? Reve <clears throat> All right. Again, thank you for being here with us today. It's our honor and our privilege to have each and every one of you here at the church, here at Messiah Baptist Church in the beautiful downtown area of Richland Hills, Texas. We're glad you're here. And of course, we want to thank those people who regularly join us weekly by way of YouTube. We appreciate those people who do that. It's a blessing to have people who regularly and faithfully join us week after week. Uh, we hope that we are being a blessing uh, to those who are not able to be here with us. Uh, <clears throat> today's message, I usually get an amen from this first statement. Today's message is not a long message. <laughs> but I have to tell you, it's a pretty powerful message. It really has a, a real powerful uh, message to it. Uh, today, we're going to be speaking on the subject of hearing, of hearing. <clears throat> John said, before I, I read the, the, the scripture, John said that whoever hears the words of God is a follower of God. Whoever hears the word of God is a follower of God. And he's talking about a special kind of hearing, which we will discuss. Over the years, I have noticed that sometimes people get hard of hearing. Sometimes people lose their hearing. And sometimes people have a hard time listening or focusing. And I put this in here for the ladies. Sometimes men were accused of having selective hearing. Sometimes. I have noticed, personally, I have noticed for me personally that if the TV is on and it's loud, if the radio is playing music and I'm listening to a song that I know and then someone is trying to talk to me at the same time, I find myself saying, what did you say? They can be two feet away. Oh, what did you say? For me, it's very hard to listen to one thing and then turn my focus in on a conversation. I think women are better at it than men, though. I'm just saying. If I'm watching the Cowboys, and someone starts talking to me, I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm only hearing a few words of what you're saying. I simply can't carry on an intelligent conversation and stay focused when there is a lot of noise. I just can't do it. But now, if Someone is saying, I love you, I care about you, then I turn off the noise because I want to hear that. I want to hear that. I turn off the noise. When my kids were small, many times I would carry them in my arms. Y'all familiar with that, aren't you? you? Those of you, the parents, carried them till they was about three years old, and they got a little too big. But I carried them 
you know, in my arms. Sometimes they would talk to me while I'm carrying them in my arms. And of course, lots of times I would be in church, you know, because we, we raised our kids up in, in church. Sometimes they would talk to me while I was talking to someone else. I had them in my arms and someone was here talking. And I was talking, then I would hear these words, just out faintly, I'd hear, Daddy? Hey, Dad? Dad? And I'm talking. And if I didn't pay any attention, Glenn, <laughs> till they got my attention. They wanted me to look them in the eye. They wanted my undivided attention. John wrote in the book of Revelation these words in Revelation 2 and verse 7. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. That is not a temporary promise, that is an eternal promise yes. that will last forever. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Jesus says those words to all seven churches mentioned in the book of Revelation. He says those words, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. This is what we know. He is not talking about the natural hearing or the natural ear. He's talking about the spiritual hearing. Each of the seven churches will have a commendation. I mean, something good said about them or a condemnation. When he says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Each church is given a promise. And if they will hear or listen to what the Spirit is saying, God promises that he's going to bless them in some special way. You see, I've observed, at least I think I have observed, not all churches are listening to the, what the Spirit is saying. That is also true for the individual. Listen to what the, Spirit, the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart and your mind, and He promises to bless. But what we know is not everyone is listening. When the Spirit speaks to us, He is speaking to our heart and to our soul. He is speaking to us the things of God. We all have ears to hear noise, but not everyone can hear the words of the Holy Spirit because not everyone, first, has the Spirit of God living in them, but secondly, sometimes we simply aren't listening. Just like your eyes of faith can see things that the natural eye cannot see. You can see things like love and joy and goodness and kindness. You can see those things because you have spiritual eyes. Your spiritual ears hear the things of God. If you're listening or paying attention and if your heart has not grown hard or hardened, you can hear the Lord speak to your heart. 
that still small voice that's inside of you. Revelation chapter 1 verse 11 says these words. Jesus speaking, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, and Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. I am, he says, the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Now look in verse 18 of that same chapter. I am he that liveth and was dead. He died on the cross, but I am alive. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and death. Write these things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand are the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. The angels are the pastors or the bishops of those churches. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven Churches, he that hath an ear, spiritual ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He repeats that statement seven times. He that hath an ear, let him hear. Do you think, do you honestly think that the Holy Spirit still speaks to churches? Do you think he still does? If you are a believer, and only if you are a believer, then somewhere in your past, the Holy Spirit spoke to your heart, and you listened, and you became a born-again Christian. And now, the Holy Spirit and your spirit have become one. Do you think that God has run out of salvation? Do you think God has run out of salvation? Do you think he's got plenty to go around? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I think there's plenty of salvation to go around. There's enough to save the whole world. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, and you're not your own? You have been bought with a price? Therefore glorify God in your body, which is the Lord's. My dear friend, if the Holy Spirit spoke to your heart once, listen to me carefully, if the Holy Spirit spoke to your heart once, do you think it is possible for him to speak to you again. Do you think it's possible for the Holy Spirit to speak to you again? How sad the human heart that never hears the Holy Spirit. How sad the human heart. You who have heard and listened to the Spirit of God you are now a brand new person on the inside. You now have spiritual hearing. On the outside, sometimes we get a little bit hard of hearing. Or there's so much noise for us that we can't focus in. So we sometimes... Pay little attention because of all the noise, all the different things, all the different avenues of noise. Sometimes we pay little attention to those we're closest to. I'm sorry, what did you say? 
but you were just two feet away. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Would you repeat it? I was busy. I was busy on the Internet. I'm sorry, I was busy looking at Facebook. You were right there. I, I'm right here. But I was busy looking on Facebook and there was something going on over in, in uh, you know, Florida. And I, I, I don't want to look at it. But you're right here. I was busy. I was watching a movie. Here's one. You're talking to me. But I'm on the phone. Oh, what about this one? The Cowboys are playing. You're just two foot away. You're trying to get my attention. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. What did you say? Sometimes, even in our spirit life, we get distracted. We fail to hear the Spirit of God speaking to our heart and to our soul. <clears throat> God will not only speak to you about getting saved, which I assume most of you have been saved, but He loves you. That's why the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. He can't get any closer to you. He loves you. He wants to spend time with you. For the Spirit of God will lead, guide, and direct your every thought if you will listen. Listen with the spiritual ears, which involves your heart. It involves your heart. Solomon said, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he will delight in his way. God's ways are always the best way. We just don't always go them. God's ways are always the best way. We need to listen to know his will, don't we? We need to listen. Oh, here's one. Many years ago, right here at this church, many years ago, 25 years ago. I had a man who was a member of the church. He called me and he wanted to talk to me. Okay. You know, and I didn't mean to, but I kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. But finally I talked to him. He wanted to leave the church in his will. I thought, wow, that's a surprise. That don't happen every day. Maybe once in a lifetime. I asked him these words. I said, why do you want to do that? Because the Lord told me to. Preacher didn't tell him to. The Lord told him to do that. 36 years ago, 36 years ago, this January, I believe I heard the Holy Spirit when he said to my heart, go start a church, Paul. Go start a church. No money, no backing, just the Spirit of God speaking to my heart. And we started. I heard and I listened. And today, Messiah Baptist Church is a reality. What I saw with the eyes of faith is real. And I would say I thank God is continuing to bless us. My dear friends, it is not that the Holy Spirit is not speaking. But maybe there's so much noise, or maybe we're so busy, we're just not listening. If you're here today, and you are not a Christian, maybe inside of you, 
you're hearing a small little voice that's speaking to your heart. That voice is the Spirit of God. Jesus is telling you to come unto him, to come to him. He who says that they believe in him, he says they will not perish, but have everlasting life. And here's the key to listening to the Holy Spirit. Here's the key, one of the keys. The Holy Spirit will always lead you to Jesus. The Holy Spirit will always lead you to do the right thing. The Holy Spirit will always lead you to do the will of God for your life. Did you know? God is not willing that any one of you should perish. Do you know that? He doesn't want anyone in this room to perish. He wants everyone in this room to be saved. He wants everyone who is hearing the sound of the gospel to be saved. Listening with their heart. Listening with their soul. Jesus promised that when he went away, he would send the Holy Spirit to help us to comfort us, to lead us, to guide us, to direct us. It is our belief, it is our belief that the Holy Spirit will speak to our spirit and our heart if we will listen, if we will listen. So today, I'm asking you, close off for a moment your earthly ears. Close them off just for a moment and open up the spiritual ears and listen for faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. Let me encourage you to pray this simple prayer before we go home. Pray this simple prayer. Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? If you're not a Christian, his will is for you to be, be saved. If you haven't been serving the Lord, his will is for you to come and dedicate your life or rededicate your life to him. And I think it's God's will that you be a member of a church that's preaching the gospel. So if you're looking for a church, you're welcome to come and be a part of Messiah Baptist Church. Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? It might just surprise you what the Lord speaks to your heart. You cannot change your kids. You cannot change them. You cannot change your spouse. The truth is you can't even change your own heart. But God can if we'll just listen. Let's bow our heads. Father, Lord God, we pray for your spirit to speak to every heart that they may hear that still small voice inside of them, the one we talk about all the time, that still small voice that speaks to us. Oh Lord, May your spirit have free reign. May your spirit have free reign in our heart and in our soul. Lord, this week, I'm asking for these people to take a little time to turn off all the noise just for a few moments and listen to see what the Spirit of God says to them. For just as surely as you spoke to these people 2,000 years ago, 
you will speak to us if we will listen. I pray, Father, for your will to be done in each heart and each life. In Jesus' name, amen. Jody, what number are we singing, honey? 330. 330, would you stand with us? We'll sing just a couple of verses. Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? <laughs> 